And I was thinking about this offline, and I do want to put an S there to request which actions are hot this frame. Actions hot. I could say actions requested, but this function name is already a little too long. Return actions this frame and actions uh, equal to actions. All right, so now I'm treating uh, actions a little bit like a mask there. Let's say this variable has this turned on and actions is this right here and I end that together. One and zero is zero. Zero and one is zero. One and one is one. Zero and zero is zero. That will not that's a not. <laughs> not be equal to the original actions that are sent in here. Zero, one, one, zero. So that means they're not all turned on. But let's say, let's say that the user had their hand all over the keyboard and they had all the keys down. And then the actions that I'm testing for are these two. And so I and these two together. Well, one and zero. Is zero. One and one is one. One and one is one. One and zero is zero. And that is equal to what I originally sent in. So that does test for multiple actions. I'll stick with that. That last video was a little uh, exhausting and a little long. So I think that concludes what I was trying to build here with the game and the engine and having the actions. The engine doing the heavy lifting and all the game has to report is hey these actions map to those keys here. The, here. Here's all the game has to do. Every game you write just has to do that and then the engine takes care of the rest. I'm going to close all the windows. Let's build and just see if we're building generally with that much code. You know I fail at a clean build so let's just see if we build build succeeded. <laughs> I am feeling a little uneasy because we didn't do unit tests for this one. I've unit tested everything and I feel good about the unit tests, but I'm not sure how I'm going to fake keyboard input unless I add another interface and then I can throw in a mock object. I could do that with mock objects, but well, I'm feeling lazy right now. Go Google mock objects though. We could set up another interface so instead of saying get async key state, we could say get key state to some interface, then we could have a mock object that would report uh, current key states being present or not. And yada, yada, yada. Let's, let's get back to our entity system we're trying to build, or the bottle caps. Remember, we are building a ship, a ship entity. And what are the bottle caps that we've added thus far? I vaguely recall a... a oh, that's big. Let's, uh, let's do it smaller. A renderer component that's too small <laughs> a physics component it's a very basic physics component just moves the ship according to its velocity the whole goal in doing the keyboard input is I'm trying to control the keyboard again using the keys so we need another component which we should call I don't know uh, input component maybe I don't like that let's call it controller controller component that sounds much better. So it will control our ship based off of what the user is pressing on the keys. And that's actually going to be game side thing. It will say, hey, what actions are being performed? And according to those actions, I will update the physics component or any other components right now. All it needs to do is update the physics component. So let me clear that off. Let me get notepad off the screen there. Get back here. Right click. Add class, enter controller component. You'll notice I'm adding the controller component to the game. And let me click finish here and bring the solution explorer back up. The controller component is right here in the game. All the other components we built were in this engine side things because these are reusable components. But the component, the controller component, is a very specific component to the game. So it's kind of cool that the component system can span both the sand, the game and the engine. Control K O to format the header guards. Alt drag underscore. Uh, go to the compilation unit. Delete all of this. Controller component needs to inherit from components. So pound include entity slash component dot h public 
component and all its entities, isn't it? Didn't we do a namespace? I think we need to add that namespace here as well. Namespace entities and down here, control A, K, F. Now we can inherit publicly from component. I believe from component we have an update that we want to override. So let's add that here. Get the virtual off of it though, because it was declared as virtual in the parent class. And then copy that. Go down to the compilation unit. Paste this in here. We need the namespace entities. And take that off. And entities. <laughs> Oh, no, not entities. Ah! Controller component. Shift tab. Now the controller component has to say, hey, input. What actions are being requested this frame? I'm going to go tell the physics component to behave according to what you tell me are being pressed this key. But I just recall by saying that that the input system, it's it's one input system serves the entire game. It's much like we saw with the profiler, and this is not the last time we're going to see this design pattern. With the profiler, we wanted one profiler, one instance of the profiler to service the entire program. Same thing with the input. We want one input to service the entire game. So hopefully you recall that that's the singleton pattern that does or accomplishes that for us. To do that, we're going to define the copy constructor and the assignment. We're not going to define them. We're going to declare the copy constructor, key input, const key input, reference, like so. And then we need the assignment operator, key input, reference, operator, assignment, takes a key input. We will not implement these because we do not want to allow people to create other instances by assigning or copy constructoring a key input. Let's do static key input instance. We need to define the memory. We've declared that this will exist. We need to define the memory for our singleton key input. The best place to do that is in the compilation unit. So we will say key input, key input, or no, key input, key input instance. That defines the actual static memory that will exist for the entire program. We need a get instance function. Static key input reference get instance. I would say it's const out here, but it's a static function, thus it can't modify any instance members because it's static. And then down, what's the red squiggly about? No default constructor exists. Of course it doesn't exist. I forgot one other key thing of the uh, singleton design pattern. I have to make the constructor private. And I'm inlining it here like so. I don't have to say inline out here because when you define a function inside of the actual class, then it's implicitly inlined. Oh, a lot of stuff going on here. I'm whizzing through this singleton design pattern because I explained it in depth with the profiler. If you need to remember why I'm doing everything I'm doing, go back and check out the profiler. Uh, let's do the get instance function. Key input reference. Key input. Input. Get instance. Like so. Return instance. And this the and also to make it syntactically nicer to consume, I'm going to pound define input to be key input get instance so now all over my code I can just say input instead of key input who's going to be responsible for initializing key input when the game starts I believe we have an initialization routine in my game let's look here yep there's initialize hiding out right there we need to pound include input pound include input key input uh, alphabetize, alphabetize, sorry, Alph alphabetize that, render initialize, uh, ship initialize, when should we initialize input, let's do it right here, if not input dot initialize, okay, I'm not sure why IntelliSense died on me, let me see if I can get that Man, I am getting tired or hungry or one of the two, but the reason why this, whoops, 
I put that return false in there too. But well, the reason why this doesn't work is I defined it the CPP file. It's in the compilation unit. No other compilation units can see it. You can. I'm getting sloppy with my uh, singleton. I was trying to whip that out fast because uh, you've seen that before. Let's put it in the header file so that all compilation units can see it. And then going back here, if not an input initialize, if I recall. Why is it still red squiggly? Let's ask the compiler if it complains. Left. Key input is not a class. What's your problem? Key. Oh, duh. My pound defines bad. It's got to be input. Key input. Because the compiler literally, or not the compiler, the preprocessor, when I say input, it copies and pastes this. So copy that and paste it right here. Well, if I don't have the input colon colon at the beginning, then it's like, I don't know what key put input is. Well, that's because it's in this input namespace. So hopefully that fixes all that input. Uh, build started. Good. All right, that's what I expected. Input takes a key mapper and a max action value. that We, we requested that in the last video. So we need a key mapper. We already set up a key mapper with my key mapper so let's make that part of my game uh, right here I guess pound include my key mapper and then we need to define memory for that we'll do that I'll we'll probably just do that right here my key mapper input my key mapper <laughs> Key mapper, thank you for indenting this for me, Visual Studio. The Q object macro is messing it up. I'm going to save this file, go back over to here, and pass address of key mapper. Then the max value is in my menu choice. Input my menu choice max. Input my my menu choice. Max, and we need the pound include for that. Pound include my menu choice. I think we should be good to go. Now recall, I like to shut down in the opposite order that we initialize. So the shutdown, we say render shutdown. Uh, we initialize the ship, but we never shut down the ship. That's bad. So let's shut down the the input and the ship. Two, so bool good gets true if not ship dot shutdown then good gets false that's bad you know what let's do this good and equals ship shutdown so we'll, we'll assume that everything's good I'll say true on that then hey good uh, let's let's say true and if this is false then good will switch the false good and equal input dot shutdown and then just to be consistent good and equal render shutdown and then we'll return whether or not we're good if these all return true then good will remain true otherwise good will re get set to false and one flaw in our initialization technique we should come back to in a later video is uh, if something's initialized but then something fails to initialize, do I still tell that thing that failed to initialize to shut down? And then we're not really keeping track of what initialized and what shut down. We should probably do that. But at least I'm shutting down in the order that we're initializing up here. Anyway, I'm going to end the video here. And I'm not even sure what the title of this video. We've done so many random things in this video. I'm going to end it and, and pick up with the controller component in the next video.